In Game 6 of the 1992 NBA Finals between the Chicago Bulls and the Portland Trailblazers, there was a moment when Bulls fans were actually scared that they would lose. And their savior, the greatest basketball player of all time, was riding the bench heading into the fourth quarter. The Bulls were up 3-2 in the series, but things looked bad for them when they were down 15 as the fourth quarter of Game 6 began. The Portland Trailblazers outscore the Chicago Bulls 29-20 in the third, and they lead it by 15 as we head to the fourth quarter. A Game 7 seemed inevitable. Jordan was trying to win the game by himself, and by Scottie Pippen, Bulls assistant coach Tax Winter noticed that. So he went up to Jackson and told him to take his airness out. Michael, meanwhile, was trying to do too much, Pippen wrote in his memoir, and it was backfiring. You have to get him out of there, Tex Winter pleaded to Phil Jackson. He's holding the ball too long, destroying the action. With MJ on the bench, the Bulls went on a 14-2 run to start the fourth quarter, but in the last dance doko, it wasn't even mentioned, and Pippen got upset about it. The only footage of Game 6 was showing the final seconds ticking off. Pippen wrote, It wouldn't have enhanced Michael's legacy to show his supporting cast being the difference in a game of such magnitude. The Bulls would likely have lost that game if Phil had put Michael back in earlier in the fourth quarter. Tex was right. Michael wasn't moving the ball. It took just three minutes and 30 seconds for Pippen and the rest of Chicago's supporting cast to launch a 14-2 run. The Blazers 81, the Bulls 74, and the Bulls are doing it without Michael Jordan. And by time Jordan got back on the floor, the Bulls were within three points. Then it was time for MJ to put things away. Jordan had struggled to find a rhythm for most of the contest, but he seemed to draw energy from the Bulls' stunning comeback. Jordan with the steal! The first time Chicago has led since the open minutes. The six-time NBA Finals MVP scored 10 of Chicago's last 12 points. MJ finished the contest with 33 points and kept Chicago in command to clinch the second end of back-to-back -back titles. However, he never would have had that opportunity if Pippen and the bench guys failed to get the ball rolling and bring the Bulls back from the brink. Michael Jordan's Bulls teammates rarely snatched the spotlight from MJ, yet they also seemed to make their presence felt at the most pivotal junctures of big games. John Paxson hit several key jump shots during Game 5 of the 1991 NBA Finals and drilled the game-winning three-pointer in Game 6 of the 1993 Finals. Steve Kerr knocked down a go-ahead jumper to win Game 6 of the 1997 Finals after Utah Jazz guard John Stockton came over to double Jordan. It was more of a collective effort in 1992, with guys like Stacey King, BJ Armstrong, and Scott Williams doing their part to help Pippen get the Bulls back into the mix. The Game 6 run was essential, mainly because a victory would have given the Blazers the momentum after losing Game 5. Of course, Jordan still had to close the show, but that was something he seldom failed to do spectacularly. In truth, he was on the bench when the Bulls faced their potential do-or-die moment. Tell us in the comments, was Scottie Pippen right criticizing MJ after the last dance? I felt like the documentary only told a story that sort of glorified him as a player and not glorified us as a team. And if you enjoy this video, hit the like button, share, and subscribe. For even more basketball content, subscribe to our other channels, Free Dawkins and Vintage Dawkins, and follow us on social media.